Thank you, Cornell. It's uh, very much a distinct uh, personal pleasure and honor for me to be able to introduce the Waterway Council's Leadership Service Award recipient tonight, Senator Chuck Grassley. The man we are honoring this evening grew up on a farm in Butler County, Iowa. He has never forgotten his roots. His political career began in the Iowa State House in 1958. He was 25 years old, and while serving in the state legislature, he also worked as a sheet metal worker on the side, so he knows, uh, he knows what hard work is. In 1974, he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives and served three terms in the House. He was elected to the Senate, and now um, in his fifth term, the good people of Iowa have returned him each time with a very large margin, and we hope that uh, they do so again, and, and as long as he's willing to uh, run. As a lifelong family farmer, Senator Grassley brings real-world world understanding of business and economics and the vital role agriculture plays in our economy and the quality of life that that adds to our economy. And in that sense, he well understands our nation's ports and inland waterways are critical to the economic well-being of the United States, particularly for, again, farming and rural economies, rural communities. Although Iowa is landlocked, Senator Grassley knows that the rivers that run through his state provide countless opportunities for expanded commerce, jobs, and economic development. Indeed, roughly half of our nation's exports of grains go down the rivers and are moved by barge. It is our inland waterway system and infrastructure that keeps us competitive in the United States and keeps us a comparative advantage to our competitors around the world in terms of grain exports. Senator Grassley also understands the environmental benefits of water transportation. He was one of the principal leaders in the effort to get the Navigation and Ecosystem Sustainability Program, as we refer to as NEST, authorized in the Water Resource Development Act of 2007. Senator Grassley is being honored here tonight for that kind of steadfast support over his many years in both the Senate and the House, supporting the improvement of our nation's ports and commercial inland waterway system. And two of those key parts of that waterway system form the eastern and western borders of the state that he represents. Senator Grassley is a member of the Senate Finance Committee, serving as its ranking member. He's a member of the Committee on the Judiciary, the Committee on the Budget, the Committee on Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry, and is the only active working family farmer on that committee. He is also a member of the Joint Committee on Taxation. Recently, he cast his 10,000th vote in the Senate. He joined only 28 other senators in our nation's history to achieve that milestone. <laughs> Iowans and many other Americans have entrusted Senator Grassley to listen to their concerns, couple it with his deep study of, the, of public policy and the issues, his common sense approach, his good standing on Capitol Hill, and to serve as an honest broker in order to shape policy decisions that will improve the potential for prosperity, for again, for Iowa and American families and communities for generations ahead. Senator Grassley is well known in both word and deed to most of us here. He is a leader, he's been a mentor, an ally, a champion, and most of all, a friend to our industry. Please join me in honoring our friend, Senator Chuck Grassley. Just look at that. And we'll ring your board. <laughs> yeah, we'll you, yeah, you bet. That's nice. Thank you very much. If I could, I'll yeah, read the description. It says, the 9th Annual Waterways Council Inc. Leadership Service Award presented this 24th day of February, 2010, to the Honorable Chuck Rassley for your steadfast commitment to the proven development of our nation's ports and waterways. Thank you. Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, they told me I had a chance to speak, so I'm the last thing between you and your food. Uh, if I were in your sh uh, shoes, I'd like to have you hurry up, but I'm not going to do that tonight. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, before I give proper thanks, uh, your uh, introduction was very accurate, but if Robin Grassley heard that about me being the only working farmer, 
you know, on the agriculture committee, he would say, Dad, why don't you tell him I do most of the work? <laughs> so, uh, so why don't I do that? Robin Grassley does most of the work and I'm kind of like a hired man. <laughs> and uh, I don't mind that. I, I enjoy being on the farm and everything. Well, I suppose you know that some of us in the Senate get awards from time to time. Uh, most of the awards we get are from an organization that has specific form uh, 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 professional membership. Probably only have uh, one uh, ID in mind, uh, one issue in mind. And what's very unique about this award is from the console it comes from, you folks out there and everybody you represent because there are so many different elements involved and you've shown a capability of coming together and I don't know, I suppose it's the people up here and people back there for years that have put this together but when you stop to think of all of the, uh, the different interests that are in this diverse group that makes this award very meaningful to me and very special to me and I suppose I shouldn't name these interests because I'm going to leave somebody out, but when you uh, see a couple government agencies like the Corps of Engineers and the Coast Guard as just an example, you see conservation groups coming together uh, and for commerce on a river, and that's not necessarily uh, always the way it happens. Uh, and you have farmers and you have uh, labor union people uh, and you have uh, barge people and, and uh, you know, uh, all, all of these interests coming together, uh, which doesn't often happen, and I get an award from it, uh, that's really what makes it different, and I appreciate it very much. And for all of you that had to vote for it, thank you. And if anybody voted against me, I don't want to know who you are. <laughs> Uh, but uh, now, if I could, just before I give some remarks, so you know I haven't even started yet, uh, I, I want to tell you that, uh, that how do you succeed at this? You know, Weirda, and now you're working on the, the project of getting uh, uh, your, together how to carry out this plan and everything. Uh, uh, you exercise good judgment in coming to town in the masses you do with the different interests together. In my office, uh, barge interests, conservation interests, uh, and, uh, and uh, 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 military as well as agriculture. Uh, you know, and if you did that in several different offices on the hill and you've done that over a period of years, you're successful. I want to tell you that you're doing what the Constitution writers intended. You know, we have four fourth, First Amendment freedoms, but you only hear about press, religion, and speech. You don't hear much about the right to petition your government for redress of grievances. That means that for Senator Vetter and I, uh, we have a constitutional responsibility to consider your point of view, and you have a constitutional right to approach us with that point of view. Well, you have done it in this case over years in a very business-like way. Uh, and uh, and uh, I know in my state of Iowa, at my town meetings, uh, Warren shows up all the time uh, t talking about these issues. Uh, and uh, and uh, it, it just is the way that government ought to work. And uh, I don't know about paid lobbyists, but if there's lobbyists in this town and they're earning their money, they're not coming to my office or Senator Vitter's office. What they're doing is they're getting the people back home at the grassroots of America to contact us. That's the way to lobby if you want to get things done. And, uh, and, and, and so I, I, just compliment, I just compliment you for all of this. Uh, the inland and intercoastal uh, waterways and our ports are vital to the United States. And we have an infrastructure on the Mississippi that has been set up over seven or eight decades. It must be preserved and it must be expanded. And that's what you folks are all about. These waterways that are beyond even the Mississippi River uh, serve 38 states throughout our nation. Shippers and consumers depend on the ability uh, uh, of these facilities 
to move around 1 billion tons of cargo valued at over $380 billion annually. Our nation's inland waterway system also provides a cost-effective, fuel-efficient, and yes, environmentally friendly way to move our bulk products. The true, the Tennessee Valley Authority estimates that it is $11 cheaper to send goods on our waterways compared to other modes of transportation. And people have asked where Barbara Grassley is. Well, I'm ashamed to tell you she's across the street at a railroad meeting. <laughs> but, 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 but don't hold that against me. She's a very independent person, as you can probably tell. See? So all of, these all of these statistics I give you add up to significant transportation savings which contribute to our economy. Not just to the economy of the groups that I mentioned here, but to the entire economy. Let's get that clear. It's just not the interest here in this audience that benefit from this. The entire country benefits. You know the statistics as well as I do. One gallon of fuel allows one ton of cargo to be shipped on 576 miles by barge as compared to 460, 36 miles by rail and 155 miles by truck. And I'll make sure Barbara Grassley knows that before she goes to bed. <laughs> In addition, towboats emit 35 to 60 percent fewer pollutants than locomotives or trucks. By moving goods on the inland waterway, we're helping to relieve congestion and adding to the nation's economic prosperity. For our country to grow economically, we must not allow our transportation infrastructure to continue to deteriorate. Uh, all you have to do as a farmer like we are is just remember back, I suppose it's been maybe 10 years now, but when a lock breaks down on the Mississippi, on the Iowa, uh, uh, on the Iowa part of the Mississippi and the price of corn and beans dramatically drops. You know that what happens on the Mississippi River is very important to our prosperity and you also know that, uh, that, uh, that it's got to be maintained uh, and it's a sure signal when those things happen that uh, the importance of it. You know, we take too much for granted in America. We've had too much uh, and we take it for granted, but when things like that happen, you know for sure the importance of it. Now our international competitors, we know, are making major investments in their transportation systems. Therefore, we must invest in major improvement to our river infrastructure. If we don't, U.S. industry, agriculture, and labor will pay the price. In 2006, I took a trip to Brazil to see the agriculture and inland waterway investments that country has been making. The surface transportation infrastructure in Brazil is inferior to ours, but Brazil has made significant investments in its river infrastructure. We saw an outloading facility on the Amazon River at Center Reem about 400 miles from the Atlantic Ocean, which is about the same distance as Memphis is from New Orleans. This advanced facility shows just what kind of competition we're up against uh, with considering Bra Brazil, pr pr particularly in agriculture, a very major competitor. There's also in Brazil a barge facility about 600 miles from the Atlantic Ocean. The ability for barges to travel that far into the mainland will help Brazil become competitive with our own farmers someday and they would be right now if they had that surface infrastructure that we have. Once they figure out how to better get those goods to the river, then we could find ourselves at a very disadvantage and this has to be one of the main reasons that we continue down this road that you and I are working together. Now another good example is the international investment in the improvement uh, to the Panama Canal. This expansion project doubles the canal's capacity. In recent years, the containerized uh, segments of traffic at the canal has grown significantly, and these modernizations will allow 
this growth to continue. So, then to enhance U.S. infrastructure and the movement of goods to and from my home state of Iowa is very, very important. I worked for many years to get the initial authorization to lock and dam modernization and enhanced environmental restoration on the upper Mississippi and Illinois rivers signed into law. I am pleased that this important modernization was included in the last Water Resource Development Act. However, funding and timing of these improvements, like many navigation projects across the nation, continues to be a challenge. So that brings me to what you folks talk to us about today. We're all aware that the Inland Waterways User Board and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers have been working together on a proposal that would provide more efficiency and more vital navigation projects across the entire inland waterway system and to move that forward. Uh, I will carefully review the final report on this proposal and the recommendations from the Corps when they are available. Now, we have U.S. trade policy that's very important uh, to make maximum use of uh, these facilities that we have and our expansion of them that we're planning to make. Uh, so U.S. trade policy and its uh, effects on exports and in particular agricultural exports have major impact on the U.S. waterway uh, transportation system. The United States, as we were just told, is the world's largest agricultural exporting country. About one in three acres in, every, uh, in our country are planted for export. Agricultural exports account for about a quarter of farm cash receipts. In 2008, 79% of U.S. agricultural exports were carried on U.S. waterways. The United States has the opportunity to even further expand its agricultural exports and thus increase traffic on its waterways by implementing trade agreements with Colombia, Panama, and South Korea, and eventually, hopefully, and hopefully a lot of other countries, but those three are pending right now. These agreements would provide major benefits to farmers in the United States, including my state of Iowa. According to the American Farm Bureau Federation, our trade agreement with Colombia, Panama, and South Korea, once fully implemented, could result in two and a half billion dollars in additional U.S. farm exports each year. So it is vital that we implement these trade agreements. Boosting our exports and expanding trade would help to get our economy moving again. My highest trade priority this Congress is to implement those three agreements. Yet the ball is in President Obama's court, and I don't say that in a denigrating way, but that's the way the process works. We don't vote on them until he presents them to us. Uh, he has yet then to send these implementing bills for these agreements to Congress, and until he does, we can't deal with them. When we do deal with them, they can't be filibustered, they got to be voted up or down, so we know that there's an end in sight once we get them, and I plead with him almost every day to get them up here. So once again, I appreciate and applaud the Waterways Council for your efforts to educate and advocate for the needs of the inland waterway system and our ports. And of course, receiving an award like this, uh, being in my office is going to be a constant reminder that we're not done, that just getting the act passed Getting the plan before us when it's, uh, when it's made public is, is just the uh, pronouncement of a lot of work that lies ahead of us. But I feel very comfortable in the success of this uh, coalition of people coming together, so many different interests, that if you keep up your fine work, we're going to keep America working and we're going to move our critical products uh, through a waterways network that is not only uh, repaired, but modernized. And we're going to be able to do it in much more abundance than in the past, and we're going to do it without interference to environment and any other interest, including recreation, that are involved in this. We'll make sure that happens, and I want to continue to work with you. I thank you once again for such a nice award.